Choosing computer gaming hardware is pretty simple, right? Everyone always picks the highest clock speeds, the fastest transfer rates, or the most frames per second. So logically, to have shorter load times in games, you want the fastest possible storage drive, right? Maybe, maybe not. Today we're going to compare the performance of NVMe drives to SATA SSDs and see if it's worth it for you to spend the extra money. I'm sure you've all heard of NVMe-based drives by now, but just in case you haven't, here's a quick recap. NVMe stands for Non-Volatile Memory Express, and it's a device interface designed around low latency and parallelism for flash-based storage. As a result, performance is amazing in every category. Sequential read, sequential write, random read, and random writes are all through the roof. NVMe drives like the Samsung 960 Pro can hit speeds of 3.5 gigabytes per second for sequential reads and 2.1 gigabytes per second for sequential writes. Sure, at this point, you're probably saying, but Julia, that's sequential. How often are you transferring large files around? And you're right, but NVMe drives also have super low latency, even when dealing with lots of small randomized data. Regular three and a half inch spinning hard drives can hit max latencies of around 140 milliseconds. SSDs approve upon this with a maximum of about 2 milliseconds, and NVMe drives a whole order of magnitude faster with a max of 0.2 milliseconds. So on paper, it looks like NVMe drives are a clear winner, but NVMe drives also cost twice as much as SATA SSDs. So can you expect twice the performance out of it? We'll be looking at this from a real-world gaming perspective. No synthetic benchmarks, no 64Q depth virtual machine servers, or crunching numbers in huge databases. Just good old-fashioned, real, observable data. For our test bench, we're using the one that Riley threw together for the Aura Sync video, which you can watch up here. But in case you didn't see it, it's got an Intel i7-7700K processor, 32 gigs of G-Scale Trident Z memory, an ASUS Z270 Maximus 9 Hero motherboard, and our custom vinyl-wrapped carbon fiber Founders Edition GTX 1080, which if you're curious how we did this, you can also watch the video up here in the corner again. The two drives we'll be testing today are a 250 gig Samsung 840 Pro SATA SSD and a 400 gig Intel 750 series NVMe PCIe SSD. We're going to skip regular spinning hard drives because we already know those are noticeably slower than solid state based storage. For the testing, we decided to look at the load time of three pretty different games, Battlefield 1, Overwatch, and The Sims 4. For the first test, we loaded up the single-player war story mode called Through Mud and Blood in Battlefield 1. We chose the single-player level instead of a multiplayer round so your network, the server location, and other players wouldn't have an effect. Our testing methodology is pretty simple. Run the game in a window and measure disk usage on Windows' own resource monitor. Oh, and a stopwatch on our phone. And a stopwatch on our phone. On our phone. And a stopwatch on our phone. Within seconds, we realized our testing methodology for Battlefield 1 was quite flawed. You see, it hides its load times behind cutscenes so you never really know exactly when it's done loading. We tried spamming the skip cutscene button, which isn't the most scientific method, but was good enough to show any large differences. With the Samsung 840 Pro, we loaded in about 29 seconds. With the Intel 750 series, also 29 seconds. And this wasn't a caching issue either. In between each run, we restarted the system, loaded up other games and large video clips to try and make sure that none of the original game files were still ready to go. The results were the exact same when we tested Overwatch and The Sims 4 as well. Both drives took exactly five seconds to load from the Overwatch menu into the single player training zone. And both drives took seven seconds to go from The Sims 4 neighborhood selection menu into the goth household. So how come they took the same amount of time? Well, it's pretty simple actually. Games simply aren't being bottlenecked by storage. When we look at the resource monitor over all of our runs, we notice that there's very little data actually being read from your disk. Battlefield 1 peaked at about 200 megabytes per second briefly, but stayed around 70 megabytes per second during most of its 29 second load. 
Overwatch only peaked at 20 megabytes per second while maintaining an average of less than 1 megabyte per second. And finally, The Sims 4 peaked at about 4 megabytes per second but also stayed at less than 1 megabyte per second. So, what are the takeaways from all this testing? Well, Again, pretty simple actually. For the average user out there, you will be perfectly fine with a SATA SSD for gaming. The difference between traditional spinning hard drives and solid state flash storage is day and night. However, NVMe drives don't offer too many tangible benefits as of right now for the everyday user. We played around with big open world games as well, such as GTA 5 and The Witcher 3. However, neither of these games stressed our storage options either. Game data being low was much less than the 500 megabyte per second cap of the SATA SSD, let alone the 3,500 megabytes per second cap of a high-end NVMe drive. If you were building a gaming system or looking to upgrade your current one, then I hope this helped you save some money. NVMe drives have amazing potential, but that's only useful if you do something that can actually utilize it. Use the extra money instead that you saved towards a faster processor or more RAM. Thanks for watching and click here for previous videos and check us out on Twitter over here. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment down below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. Now, go on and game. Okay. <laughs>